a warm good morning to everyone today i'm going to talk about hormones from gonads and the first section what i am taking it the sex hormones usually the sex hormones uh, produced by the gonads are uh, necessary for various uh, reproductive processes as for conception embryonic maturation and development of primary and secondary sexual characteristics at puberty their activity in target cell is modulated by receptors <clears throat> so uh, in this sex hormones uh, chapter first we'll discuss about the female sex hormones to understand the female sex hormones and uh, their actions in the body we have to understand the female reproductive cycle i will not take this cycle in uh, very much detail but i'll brush you up with some details what you have studied before so you normally this uh, reproductive cycle uh, it we consider the reproductive cycle from the day the first menses or first menstruation starts and the day when the last menstruation comes so the day from menar to day of menopause this whole tenure we consider it as a reproductive cycle for this to control this whole uh, reproductive cycle there are very important roles of certain hormones these hormones secreted by hypothalamus or anterior pituitary and ovaries too this uh, cycle uh, we have two very very important uh, phases in this first the ovarian cycle so ovarian cycle means the activities which are happening in the ovary or by the ovary comes under the ovarian cycle is a series of events in the ovaries that occurs during and after the maturation of an oocyte in the coming slides you will understand what this oocyte is the uterine cycle which is also called as menstrual cycle because in the menstrual cycle everything all the events which are happening they are happening in the uterus so is a concurrent uh, series of changes in the endometrium of the uterus to prepare it for the arrival of a fertilized ovum that will develop there until birth this whole cycle you should understand the concept here this whole cycle is for what why this all cycle is happening actually so there is a very very big uh, purpose behind it you know that the female body is the only one who can conceive and reproduce and uh, having a child bearing capacity so this everything this all reproductive cycle is to solve the purpose of that to make the or to um, make the women body or uh, female body receptive for a fertilization and to get pregnant so this whole process is for that here uh, some important hormones which are playing very important role in this gonadotropin releasing hormones in in a group we call it as gnrh secreted by the hypothalamus control the ovarian and uterine cycles which i have discussed before the ovarian and uterine cycles these are controlled by the gnrh gnrh stimulates the release of follicular stimulating hormone which we call fsh and luteinizing hormone lh from the anterior pituitary so now gnrh is secreting from hypothalamus don't get confused 
and then when the GnRH release from the hypothalamus, it will stimulate the anterior pituitary to release the FSH and LH. FSH initiates follicular growth while LH stimulates further development of the ovarian follicle. So what these both hormones are doing, they are ensuring the development of the ovarian follicles which will later give you the oocyte. In addition, both FSH and LH stimulates the ovarian follicle to secrete estrogen. So, not only the development of ovarian follicle, but also the FSH and LH stimulates the ovarian follicle to secrete estrogen, right? which is actually our main target to study. So, estrogen will be uh, secreted by the follicles by the help of the FSH and LH. <clears throat> now, LH stimulates the theca cell of the developing follicle to produce androgens. How it is happening? The LH stimulates the theca cells, one of the layer of cells around the follicle. It stimulates that layer and that layer will produce the androgens. Under the influence of FSH, the androgens are taken up by the granulosa cells of the follicle and then converted into estrogen. So, L you understood what LH does and then in the sequence what FSH does. FSH, uh, what it does, it, the androgens are taken up by the granulosa cells, which in the androgens which are produced by LH. And when the granulosa cell, there is another, another layer of uh, the cells, so when they will take up they will convert this and these androgens into estrogen. At mid cycle, LH triggers ov ovulation and then promotes formation of the corpus luteum. Okay, so corpus luteum is a one covering later you will see in the structure. Corpus luteum is a one of the covering around the oocyte. The reason for the name luteinizing hormone because it is promoting the formation of corpus luteum, so this called as a luteinizing hormone. Stimulated by LH, the corpus luteum produces and secretes estrogen, progesterone, relaxin and inhibin. Later you will understand these all four hormones work in tandem, work in sequence and uh, they are having sometime agonistic or antagonistic action of each other. But by this, they will prepare or produce a one controlled action. If you talk about the estrogen, then uh, usually in the female body, around six type of estrogens have been identified. But there are only three which are significant quantities, right? And because they are in significant quantities, we can consider they are having a important role in the physiological functions which are these beta estradiol estron and estriol in a non pregnant woman the most abundant estrogen is estradiol which is synthesized from cholesterol in the ovaries you know all these hormones are the cholesterol the, the, the precursor is cholesterol so estradiol which is synthesized from cholesterol in the ovaries Progesterone secreted mainly by cells of the corpus luteum. So again, corpus luteum's role is important as, I, as we discussed before. So corpus luteum is secreting progesterone. Now relaxin. Relaxin by name itself, you understand that it is relaxing something. So the small quantity is produced by the corpus luteum during each monthly cycle relaxes the uterus by inhibition, inhibiting contractions of the myometrium. Inhibin secreted by granulosa cells of growing follicle and by the corpus luteum after ovulation. So inhibin which is job is to inhibit. And now if you see uh, you are familiar with this uh, diagram just um, to uh, you know keep in your memories uh, I just put it here. You can see the hypothalamus is shown anterior pituitary is shown then how the GnRH stimulates the release of FSH and LH. FSH stimulates the growth of the follicle as, as well as FSH stimulates the ovaries for the development 
LH stimulates the ovulation as well as the development of corpus luteum and then all these acts on the development of estrogen, progesterone, relaxin and inhibin. Inhibin works as a negative feedback mechanism to stop the release of LH, LH and here estrogen also works for the feedback mechanism to promote or to stop the release of FSH as well as in the GnRH. So these uh, hormones are very well uh, controlling their own release and their own functions by the negative and feedback, negative and positive feedback mechanisms. The formation of gametes in the ovaries is termed oogenesis. Gamete means egg in the female body and the sperm in the male body. We call it as uh, means this is the gametogenesis process here oogenesis is formed in the female body e oogenesis happens in the female body to give you the ovum in contrast to spermatogenesis which begins in males at puberty oogenesis begins in female before they are even born so you can understand the female has been designated with their roles and responsibilities and the functions even before they born so the nature has given them or equipped them for what they have to do. So there the, the oo, oo genesis begins in the fetus itself of the female while the male until the puberty it's not decided or you can say uh, you can say a male is not a male until this uh, the puberty comes but the female is a female even in the fetus. A few however develop into larger cells called primary oocytes so now what happens these process in the oogenesis process primary oocytes will be formed that inter prophase of meiosis 1 during fetal development but do not complete the phase until after puberty now what happens this all is started in the fetus and uh, some of the some of them will form as a primary oocyte and rest of them will remain like that and this process will be you know stopped after the after a baby born a female baby born this all process stops and it will stop until the puberty appears so you can understand that 13 14 years this all process is just freezed and now again get uh, activated so you can understand how planned how regulated how sequential how divine this whole process is because it's all happening by itself. During this arrested stage of development, each primary oocyte is surrounded by a single layer of flat follicular cells and the entire structure is called as primordial follicle. Now you can understand when uh, the female boy be born, in that time these uh, what called the eggs or you can say primary oocytes have been procured or secured by the certain layer of cells which are called as the follicular cells and this store complete structure means uh, the egg surrounded by the follicular cells called as primordial follicle remember this word primordial follicle later you have to see i'll show you the structure the ovarian cortex surroundings the primordial follicle consists of collagen fibers and fibroblast like stromal cells now you can understand <clears throat> whenever you have the role of collagen fibers you need some kind of security or protection so these eggs which are very very essential very very precious and will define the life of a female baby so it is very important to protect them at least for those 40 year, 14 years 13 14 years so these collagen fibers get surrounded around this and make it a protective layer at birth approximately you can see that this big numbers the primary oocyte remain in the each ovary means from 2 lakh to 20 lakh you can consider these big big numbers uh, the primary oocyte remain in each ovary each ovary I'm talking if it means 20 lakhs in each ovary if you talk about the 40 lakhs means if you see another term 40 lakhs ovum means if 
each ovum get fertilized a woman in the birth time is capable of producing 40 lakhs uh, babies if they are all fertilized but because nature has all the plan because this much numbers are given that at least if something went wrong even though the women or the female must be capable of producing uh, some number of babies because that's what the job they they have been assigned of these uh, about 40,000 are still present at puberty now you can see out of that uh, 20 lakhs 40,000 will be there up to at puberty even though 40,000 is a big number means 40,000 women ovum are present at the time of puberty mean even though that time uh, one woman is capable of producing 40,000 babies and around 400 will mature and ovulate during a women's reproductive time now the 40,000 converted or you can say reach to a final number that is a 400 right so now you can say that uh, 400 out of 40,000 400 will mature so now you can say this way that the woman body will be when the uh, when it is in uh, full mature reproductive cycle 400 eggs can be matured and these 400 eggs can be if they will get fertilized 400 kids can be produced the remainder of the primary oocyte undergo atresia means rest of them will go atresia means a kind of death or a shrinkage each month after puberty until menopause gonadotropin fsh and lh secreted which develops several primordial follicles right each month uh, after the puberty until the menopause okay uh, gonadotropins are secreting this is a cycle you know very well that every month what the uh, menstruation cycle comes in this way this uh, cyclic process happens and several primordial follicles you remember the primordial follicles which are the frozen one right so they are still there so these primordial follicle although only one matures for ovulation so every month one primordial uh, that one primordial follicle convert into the uh, ovum every month so how how regulated you can understand how regulated it is right how who has defined it who has given the you know preset software that uh, out of this 400 only one will get uh, mature every month right because uh, because to control the pregnancy that the fertilization should happen for only this ovum which has been matured for that particular month a few primordial follicles start to grow developing the primary follicles now this primordial follicle when they start growing when they uh, come out of this freezing state frozen state they'll start developing again and they'll convert into primary follicle each primary follicle consists of primary oocyte so now each primary follicle has primary oocyte primary oocyte oocyte is that which will form into the ovum and the follicle word we include because it's a protective layer all around that's called the follicular cells this is, diagram is also very much family, familiar to you just to rem, uh, keep you in memory i have just kept it here you can see here uh, secondary follicle you can understand uh, the secondary follicle here this is a secondary follicle and uh, this secondary follicle will be mature follicle here it will become a mature follicle because this mature follicle finally uh, uh, you know go into the ovulation so here you see the ovulation happens means this uh, ovum which was there inside now is coming out of it right and the rest of the part this is the rest of the part will form uh, this is actually the you can say the corpus uh, luteum kind of condition okay so that that corpus luteum will get shrink off later here you can see the shrink off and it will degenerate here and that remnant of it will call as the corpus albicans so like that this process from primordial follicle to primary follicle to secondary follicle to mature graphene follicle to the ovulation this whole way this whole process actually goes on okay now uh, you can see the bigger structure diagram of the secondary follicle you can see here some some part only that uh, one important layer just around the primary oocyte is corona radiata okay 
so this uh, and a lot of blood vessels around to provide it here you can see these two layers very important theca externa and theca interna okay next is the mature graphene follicle you can see the uh, little bit of structural difference from the secondary follicle to mature graphene follicle and here you can find the corona radiata very low very few layers of it primary oocyte is there inside and that immediate inside layer is zona pellucida very important layers right zona pellucida basement membrane you can also find and some granulosa cells around so like that uh, theca externa and interna is also there so like that this whole mature graphene follicle looks like and you know now this time this uh, primary oocyte is ready to rupture it and come out of it that's called ovulation process the duration of the female reproductive cycle typically ranges from 24 to 35 days uh, but usually for the medical discussion we keep it for 28 days and divide into the four different phases the menstrual phase pro ovulatory phase pre ovulatory phase means menstrual phase means the processes which are hap what are happening in the um, uh, uh, what called the uterus and the pre ovulatory phase before the ovulation what is happening ovulation this is what happens at the ovulation and uh, post ovulatory after the ovulation what happens the menstrual phase lasts for roughly for the first five days of the cycle if you are considering the first day of menstruation is a day of a new cycle while the menstrual discharge from uterus occurs because the declining level of progesterone and estrogen stimulates release of prostaglandins and that cause the uterine spinal spiral interiors to constrict now uh, why, why it's all happening why this uh, uh, declining the level of progesterone and estrogen actually progesterone and estrogen are there to take care of if the fertilization happens but what happens the ovum get matured and ovulation happens now ovum came out and waiting for the uh, sperm to get fertilized but there is no sperm no fertilization happens so when the no fertilization happens this whole preparation what has been made is of no use so this all has to be broken off this all has to be stop it so just to stop this process the uh, first there will be withdrawal of the progesterone and estrogen means progesterone and estrogen like a uh, like a precious diamonds uh, in the body they cannot be wasted for it so when there is no purpose getting solved progesterone and estrogen withdrawal from there when they withdrawn from there and then the release of prostaglandins will be there and the uh, every the shedding of the uh, internal layer of the uh, uterus is also started because uterus has been strengthened to to hold the you know the fertilized egg or you can say to hold the fetus but that's all is not happening now because sperm is not there so when it's all not 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 happening why this all has been made so it has to be stopped so the uterus which has been strengthened by taking a one month process now it's again now it started getting shedding off so like that this all cells the blood because blood vessels also getting broken off by when the wall is shedding off so like that the whole thing which uh, uh, getting collected and coming out that called as a menstrual discharge as a result the cells they supply become oxygen deprived and start to die like that that's the process of death of those cells by about day six a single secondary follicle is one of the two ovarian has outgrown all the others to become the dominant follicle and become the matured follicle right like that now the again next uh, step after this again a one uh, uh, new follicle will start developing during the final maturation process the mature follicle continues to increase its production of estrogen so uh, the repair of the endometrium is stimulated now because lot many things have been damaged during this menstrual cycle so what is needed is needed to repair it again so uh, those uh, mature follicle you know they continues to increase the production of estrogen after that so once uh, uh, that's why later in the phase you will see the uh, how the estrogen uh, surge comes up then down like that so it was earlier it was the down stage now now it is uh, uh, the up stage where the repair of endometrium is happening now you can see the here uh, you can see in this stage uh, you can find uh, 
the ovarian cycle so you can say this side's ovarian cycle you can see primordial follicle primary follicle secondary follicle mature graphene follicle ovulation is happening here and this is corpus luteum formation corpus albicans formation like this all we have discussed before now how this all happening in what is happening when this all happening what is happening to uterine or menstrual phase when this is happening here nothing is happening but when this is happening menstruation is uh, started here so like that you can see what is the level of estrogen here what is the level of progesterone here and here you can see the menstrual phase and here also you can see the two layers formation how the what is the thickness of these two layers uh, along with these processes so what is happening you can see menstrual phase Sorry, you can see the menstrual phase here, menstrual phase, pre-ovulatory phase, ovulation and post-ovulatory phase, right? So it is very important to understand that what is happening in the menstrual phase here, then what is happening, you can see what is happening in the menstrual phase, the menstruation, right? This is the menstruation. Then what is happening pre-ovulatory phase, proliferative phase, this is a proliferation is going on, right? Means lot of strengthening of the uh, inner wall endometrial wall here when the final maturation happens then ovulation starts right and after that post ovulatory phase where there is no sperm came and this uh, this all is getting shedding off and uh, the level of progesterone and estrogen is coming in to repair it and to sh uh, to make the endometrial wall again the same so like that this whole process goes on here you can see changes in the concentration of anterior pituitary and ovarian hormone. So at what level you can see the days on the second day what is happening the FSH level is going little up the rest all of them are little down. Uh, you can see here 4, 5, 6, 7, 10, 11. See here you can see the 14 the highest of LH. Here estrogen is high. Here you can see the estrogen is very very low estrogen is very low progesterone is also lower but here you can see the progesterone is highest and the uh, estrogen is also quite high so like that you can compare with the days and the level of hormones are coming in hormone surge during ovulation there is a rupture of the mature follicle and the release of the secondary oocyte into the pelvic cavity usually occurs on day 14 in a 28 day cycle so ovulation happening here on the day 14 you can see ovulation happening here at day 14 so during the ovulation you have the LH and uh, estrogen are high the high level of estrogen during the last part of the pre-evolutory phase exert a positive feedback effect on the cells that secrete LH and gonadotropin releasing hormone and cause this ovulation LH causes rupture of the mature follicle and expulsion of a secondary oocyte and 9 hours after the peak of the LH surge. Uh, this is also, uh, will tell you how the feedback mechanism work when the high level of estrogen exert a positive feedback effect on the hypothalamus and anterior pituitary thereby increasing secretion of GnRH and LH means one once the estrogen is high this high est uh, estrogen will become as a signal and will inform the hypothalamus to secrete out the LH and GnRH right like that the lower level also uh, act in the same manner all right so the, uh, the the level of estrogen itself act as a indicator for the production of GnRH Theca interna, I have shown you in the in the that previous diagram. Theca interna cells mix with the granulosa cells as they all become transformed into corpus luteum cells under the influence of LH. Stimulated by LH, the corpus luteum secretes progesterone, estrogen, relaxin, and inhibin. As the level of progesterone, estrogen, and inhibin decreases, release of GnRH, FSH, and LH rises. Now you can understand this in the previous uh, uh, graph, right? Where the progesterone, estrogen, inhibin decreases, GnRH, FSH, and LH rises due to loss of negative feedback, suppression of the ovarian hormone. 
follicular growth resumes and a new ovarian cycle begins. If fertilization does not occur, the level of progesterone and estrogen decline due to regeneration of the corpus luteum. Withdrawal of progesterone and estrogen causes menstruation. This is uh, the whole ovarian cycle and uterine cycle and with uh, all the release of the uh, hormones and the different events all together you can look into it. So I hope you are understanding well uh, what the uh, female reproductive cycle is. This is just a brief description about it. If you want to study a little more, please refer the physiology book and uh, see the reproductive cycle again. These are the references I have utilized here and uh, most of the part I have taken from Totora as well as Robbins. Thank you all for listening this carefully. Wait for the part 2 where we will discuss about the estrogen and its pharmacology. Thank you.